Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you are well. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to tie a Headhunter's Knot paracord bracelet. This video was a request from one of my viewers who asked how to adapt a Headhunter's Knot into a bracelet. This video is going to answer that question. Now, this bracelet is not only nice looking, but it is also quite rare. It is one that is placed on your wrist by simply slipping it on. So it is a slip-on style of a bracelet. There are no buckles, there are no stopper knots, you just slide it on onto your wrist. With that said, let's take a closer look at the bracelet. Here you can see a couple of examples of the bracelet that we're going to tie. The one on the left is tied out of a 4 part 13 byte Turks head. As you can see, it is slightly looser than the one on the right. The right one was tied out of a 4 part 17 byte Turks head. The wider the Turks head knot that you use for the base knot, the more compact your headhunter's bracelet is going to be. With that said, let's take a look at the supplies needed, then tie one. As far as supplies go, the first supply that you're going to need is going to be something to tie the bracelet onto. In my case, I'm going to be using a Pringles chips can. But you can use a variety of other items, from bottles, cans, tubes used for tennis balls, anything that is of an appropriate shape and size. Onto such a can, I placed a rubber band in order to hold one end of the paracord that I'm going to be using to tie the bracelet. The next vital supply used to tie this bracelet is going to be paracord. I'm going to be using about 8 to 8.5 feet of paracord. To help me tie the knots a bit easier, I'm going to be using a lacing needle. A lacing needle is optional, but highly recommended. You're also going to need something to cut the paracord with, as well as a lighter to melt the ends. With these supplies ready, let's begin. I'm going to continue by first tying a base knot, then I'm going to expand it into a headhunter's knot. To begin, I have prepared my paracord by placing the standing end under the rubber band which is attached onto my Pringle scan. The other end, so the working end, is going to sport a lacing needle to help me tie the knot a bit more easily. I'm going to continue by first making a wrap around with my paracord, like this. Then I'm going to travel over the standing end, so over, then around. And with my working hand, I'm going to travel parallel to the standing end. So I'm going to travel under one towards the right side. So like this. The standing end and the working end are now parallel. I'm going to pick up the working end and I'm going to move it down quite a bit. Like this. Then I'm going to travel over this strand with my working end. So over. Then go parallel to the standing end for the second time. So again under one. Like this. Move your working hand down again. Then we're going to go over this strand. Then parallel to the standing end. Like 
like this. Now we're going to travel over this strand and under the standing end with our working end. So over under. That's all we're doing. I'm now located on the left side of the standing end. I'm going to double it up by following it under one on its left side, then over one to the right side. Then from right to left, I'm going to follow this strand, which is traveling towards the left side. And I'm going to go over, under. So over, under. Then again, from left to right, I'm going to follow this strand. So I'm going to go under, then over. Like this. Then from right to left, I'm again going to follow this strand. So I'm going to travel over, under. So like this. And one more time, from left to right, I'm going to follow this strand, so I'm going to go under, over. Like this. Now from right to left, I'm going to again follow this strand, going over, under, then proceed by going over the standing end, like this. So we went over under and over the standing end, like this. Now we have set up pairs of parallel strands. The first pair that we need to split is going to be the standing end and the strand to its left. So we begin our sequence on the left side of the standing end and we begin under, over, under. Like this. Then from right to left, we have another pair to split, so spread it apart and travel over, under, over. Then, from left to right, I find the next pair and I split it by traveling under, over, under. Then from right to left, I split the next pair, traveling over, under, over. Like this. And again, from left to right, I find the next pair of parallel strands to split, and I travel under, over, under. And the last pair, from right to left, I travel over, under and over. I now place my working hand under one, right next to the standing hand on its right side.
And with this I have tied the bass knot, which is a 4 part 13 byte Turks head. We now have a 4 part Turks head knot. We're now going to transform it into a headhunter's knot. Now we left off with our working hand going under one on the right side of the standing end. We're going to continue by doubling up the standing end on its right side, so we're going to go over under. So the entire sequence from left to right is under over under. Now, from right to left, we're going to start our next sequence with an over. This is because we finished the previous sequence with an under, so we start the next one over. So we're going to start over, over 2, in fact. So over 2, under 1, over 1. Like this. Now, from left to right, we're going to start our next sequence with an under, since we finished the previous one with an over. Under 2, over 1, under 1. And again, just like in the previous sequence, since we finished under, we begin over. Over 2, under 1, over 1. Then from left to right, we begin under 2 again, since we finished with an over. So under 2, over 1, under 1. We start the next sequence over 2, under 1, over 1. And the next one, under 2, over 1, under 1. In our next sequence, we need to go over 5 strands, so we're going to switch up our sequence a little bit. Since we finished under in the previous sequence, we're going to start our next sequence with an over 2 as well. So over 2, under 2, over 1. Then from left to right, we're going to start our next sequence with an under, since we finished over. So under 2, over 2, under 1. And the next sequence, again, over 2, under 2, over 1. And the next sequence, from left to right, under 2, over 2, under 1. And from right to left, over 2, under 2, over 1. And from left to right, under 2, over 2, under 1. We're now going to switch up the sequence a little bit once again. This time we have 6 strands to work with. Over 2, under 2, over 2. So, over 2, under 2, over 2. Now from left to right, we continue 
under to, over to, under to. Then from right to left, over to, under to, over to. From left to right, under to, over to, under to, and again, over to, under to, over to. And again from left to right, under to, over to, under to, and finally the last sequence, over to, under to, over to. And with this we have finished the tying of our bracelet. We're going to finish our end by placing it right next to the standing end, going under two. We're now going to move on to finishing the bracelet. So, after tying your bracelet, the hard part of this tutorial is behind us. We're going to take a few additional steps in order to finish up our bracelet. The first step is going to be to try out our bracelet and check the size. So, remove your bracelet off of the mandrel and try it out. While checking the size, you will want your bracelet to slide snugly past your hand and when it is placed on your wrist, it shouldn't move around too much. If it moves too much about, then it can get in your way. Now, if your bracelet is too large, you will want to reduce its size by tightening it on a smaller mandrel. So before I used a Pringle scan, now if the bracelet is too big, use something smaller. Perhaps a bottle, perhaps a PVC pipe, whatever you have available. Now let's assume that the Pringle scan size is enough for my wrist. So just the right size. I'm going to place my bracelet back on, then begin my tightening. So again, to repeat. If your bracelet is too big, tighten it on a smaller mandrel. If the bracelet is the right size, you can tighten it on the Pringle scan. To tighten it up, we start at the standing end. And we begin. Following it, pulling out a bit of slack. We're going to run through the entire knot and come out the working end. So all you do is remove the slack and you're going to gather up quite a bit while tightening. In some parts a bit more, in some parts a bit less. When tightening, make sure to check that the bracelet is nice and symmetrical on both sides. So in some cases you're going to need to leave a bit of slack behind and in some you're going to need to pull it out. After we have tightened up our bracelet, we're going to continue by melting together the two ends. To do this, first remove your bracelet off of the mandrel, and there are two ways of melting together the two ends. 
One is to cut them and melt them at the top. Then turn around your bracelet inside out. The second way is to cut and melt the two ends here at the bottom. I have decided to melt them at the bottom, so I'm going to cut my two ends here. So after cutting off the two ends, I'm going to also pull out a bit of the inner strands and trim them. So just remove a bit of your inner strands in both ends. After trimming the inner strands out of both of the ends, I proceeded by heating up one of the ends, like this, then rolling it between my fingers, naturally being careful not to burn myself, but I wanted to shape it into a nice pointed shape. This way I can now place this pointed end into the other end which is still open. Now to open up the other end a little bit more, I usually take a spike and simply spread it apart a bit. You can also use any other tool as long as it spreads apart your paracord a bit more. Then all you do is you place the pointed end into the opened end, like this. Then use your lighter in order to seal up the other end as well. So in the end this is what you should have. I inserted the pointed end into the opened end, then heated up the mantle of the opened end, and then simply rolled the heated paracord between my fingers in order to get a nice and secure connection for both of my ends. Now naturally be very careful with hot paracord. If it is too hot it's going to burn you. If it is too cold it's not going to work. So guys, with this we finally came to the end of this video. You should have a nice looking bracelet, secured with a nice melted connection of the two ends. I hope that you didn't have too much of an issue tying this bracelet and that I made everything clear enough. With that said, thank you very much for joining me and see ya next time.